so many needs right here to rebuild America, and especially in the area of infrastructure. That's the kind of leadership we need someone in that chair that would say to Mr. Obama, no, we're not going to raise the debt ceiling this year. I'm sorry. We raised it seven out of eight times for George Bush. Mr. Obama, you've been the president for six and a half years. You've had seven increases in the debt ceiling. No more. All that does is allow us to borrow money from foreign governments, and we can't even pay it back. And now the foreign governments aren't borrowing the money. The Federal Reserve uh, does it. It's just insane. Alex, that's why this is an opportunity that we don't get very often. And this opportunity is going to be driven by the people in America by calling their elected officials and say, get with the program. Give us somebody that will stand for principle to protect America. Well, look at how we've opened the southern border. We advertise you can have your babies here for free. They pull off these stunts with anchor babies yesterday with the Pope. And now we've have mainstream news saying it's our job to pay for everybody in the world. Europe's being told the same thing. Saudi Arabia caused a lot of the problems in Syria. They won't take one refugee. Since when is it the Western world's job to pay for everything? And why does D.C. do this? Because there's too much influence from, as I've said on your show many times, money drives policy. Policy should be driven by the people of America through their elected officials. It is. This is an opportunity that we will not get but every so often, and that is why we need to drive this message across this country. Sir, Congressman Jones, again, joins us. If you just tuned in, Walter Jones, North Carolina. Boehner is announcing he will resign end of October. Congressman Jones with others uh, have spearheaded the Vacate the Chair movement. He admitted, if you just joined us in his short resignation farewell speech, that it was because of, quote, leadership turmoil that was becoming destructive. Uh, is that not him signaling that the longer he stayed in, the more libertarian constitutional members of the House, uh, the more strength they got to get a good person in there? Absolutely. I, I know and, and you know that the pressure that the Meadows resolution put on the Speaker of the House, and there were more and more Republicans going home listening to people like you, Alex, that came back and said, you know, if Boehner still goes down this road, we're going to have to vacate the chair. I want to thank Mark Meadows for taking the lead. I joined him. Thomas Massey joined him from Kentucky. Ted Yoho joined him. And last week, uh, Louis Goma added his name to the resolution. Well, I said this last time you were on after you left that um, because of your leadership, I think you are a target. Because of Louis Gohmert's leadership, he's undoubtedly a target. Uh, this administration is going after, I know from high-level sources, the governor of Texas has the feds investigating. The guy's as clean as a whistle. Uh, they've indicted the attorney general who was fighting Obama, and it's happening in other states. They're taking the gloves off. This is a criminal group. I know you're a gentleman and you know don't like to use terms like that, but the 28 pages, you've seen it. Senator Graham's seen it. Yep. Uh, the Saudis were involved, quarterbacking 9-11. There was a stand down. Now we have General Flynn, the outgoing head of Defense Intelligence Agency, on television five weeks ago saying they were ordered to aid al-Qaeda and ISIS and that it was e very evil. We have the deputy head of the CIA saying it on CBS News Face the Nation two weeks ago. That signifies to me that the government, the good people in government, whether it be the FBI or the CIA or defense intelligence, or uh, you name it, are ready to stand up and tell the truth. In fact, they're doing stuff that I think endangers their lives. I know that um, Colonel Schaefer's been seriously threatened for coming on the show about Benghazi and breaking the Stinger missiles here first. Um, so, so the point is there's not just bad guys out there. There are a lot of good guys as well, and the battle is heating up right now. Uh, how does this tie into the 28 pages? I mean, what do you make of high-level generals resigning and saying, I'm not going to work with al-Qaeda and ISIS. I mean, this is sensational news. It makes it in a few papers, but then doesn't go anywhere. Alex, that's why my hope is, it's just like the 28 pages that you very kindly have had me on your show, and you know there have been other members, Steve Lynch, Democrat, Thomas Massey, Republican, have joined me in a resolution calling on the White House 
to declassify that information. I don't want to read too much into Mr. Boehner stepping down, but I'm telling you because of my frustration for a number of years, the right person in the speaker's chair can become a spokesman, a spokesman for what is good and what is right and what is wrong and what needs to be changed from wrong to right. Like Obamacare, like uh, third trimester abortion, partial birth. All of this is incredibly unpopular. It's unconstitutional. It could be overturned, but Boehner would never stand up. No, no. That, that's, that's the whole point, like I said. Uh, John is a good person, but he is not a leader. He is a leader that would rather, instead of standing for principle, he'd rather give in on principle. I know you're a gentleman and a nice guy. He comes off as a great guy to play golf with, but uh, how does he treat you in person when he runs into you, knowing for years you've been trying to get rid of him? He'll just, just say hello, and that's fine. I, I don't need to have a conversation with him. It's simply because I know what's happening to this country. I'm willing to be on your show and other shows to speak about the fact that our debt is $18.3 trillion. When Bill Clinton was in office and left office, uh, Alex, in 2000, we were $5.6 trillion in debt. We've tripled the debt in 15 years. We cannot continue to go this way and be no. a strong nation. We are a nation on weak legs right now. When it goes under, most economists say we'll be like Mexico or Nick, or you know some of the third world country. I mean, people don't seem to get it's untenable. And the ruling establishment is multinational. They don't care if America goes under. But what is going to happen if we fall into a third world country? I mean, the whole world is going to be affected by that. Well, Alex, I, I do the shopping in my family. I've been married 49 years to the same lady, and I do the shopping. And I can tell you, everything that I buy, the boxes are smaller, the ingredients are smaller amount in the, in the box, and it, the, the price goes up. I mean, w we are at a time that America's at a crossroads, and either we're going to survive or we're not going to survive. And I think this is one step to surviving by getting the right person in the speaker's chair. Absolutely. Well, you're always thanking me, sir. Please don't thank me. This is all about saving our republic. And I know you don't want thanks as well, but it's so refreshing to have a statesman like yourself. And in the last few minutes we have left here, I wanted to just ask you, because uh, I know you have to fight against a lot of the money they send against you in both parties and the rest of it. What is your prognosis for more patriot, constitutionalist, common sense, Tea Party type Republicans taking over the Republican Party uh, and saving this country? Well, on the House side, I'm very hopeful that this uh, re resin resigning by Mr. Boehner will inspire other conservative uh, libertarian types to run for office and not become part of the problem in Washington, but like a few of us are trying to be, is the solution to the problem in Washington. That's why, again, Alex, you and the many others can make the call to the American people to help us elect the right person to be in the speaker's chair. Absolutely. Uh, I know you don't like to speak ill of people, but who, who who would not be a good choice? What about what about uh, Speaker Boehner's um, right hand man? They're talking about trying to get McCarthy in there. What's your view on that? I don't think I don't think anyone from the leadership team is the right person. And McCarthy's part of that. Uh, Scalise is part of that, and Kathy Rogers McMorris. And they're good people. I like them as people, but I know that they don't have the backbone that we need in that speaker's chair to change the direction of the House and to change the direction of this country. Very well said. Uh, thank you so much, Congressman Jones. The minute and a half we have left, what else uh, is on your radar that you want to tell folks about? Well, I would just like to tell people that, and I know I've been repetitive, but I'd like to say that we're not going to get many opportunities like we have now. We have a few days for the people to rally behind Congress to put the right person in that speaker's chair. Let's get us a conservative who believes in the Constitution, who believes in the Bible, who believes in the greatness of America, and stop all this wasteful, wasteful spending overseas. I just read the title of the Washington Post article, Billions Wasted in Afghanistan, and we're going to be there eight more years, Alex, wasting money. Let's spend some here in America and rebuild this great nation. Absolutely, and let's cut 
spending and cut taxes at the same time and turn on the prosperity machine and get our country out of debt. Congressman Jones, jones.house.gov. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Alex. God bless America. Well, another uh, great Jones out there keeping the family name up. We'll be right back. Uh, there goes Congressman Walter Jones. We're going to come back and hit some more news we haven't gotten to yet. And then we have Jakari Jackson and David Knight joining us from outside the U.N. in New York City. You know, I told the Mark Cuban story back in 2007. Was it 2008? You can look it up in the New York Times. I went on record and I said uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission called up on the phone, threatened to put him in prison for insider trading, for stuff that was completely legal. Uh, if he put out loose change final cut that I produced on a thousand plus screens. And I told that story on air, but just said it was a Hollywood producer of the film, wouldn't say who, because they'd asked us not to say. And then it came out in the New York Times a year later. And in the video on Infowars.com, source White House has FBI task force investigating Infowars. We have the video where I show the New York Times article. So you've seen him go after Dinesh D'Souza, everybody. They didn't just call him up. They sent him an email that he used to kill their court case. So they indicted him again, and he beat them again. 96% of the time, you don't beat them because they'll frame you. But they went so far as to say, we're going to get you that that's how he stopped them. And the guy was worth like, you know, $4 billion. I think he's worth like $5, 6000000000 billion now. You know, smart businessman from nothing. He was able to beat them because they were so arrogant. I mean, that's how corrupt this country is. Do you really think 96% of people, the feds in doubt, are really guilty? I mean, you really believe that? No, about half of them are completely innocent. There's major studies. A third of people on death row didn't do it. DNA testing now shows. I remember the you know, up in uh, Round Rock, the prosecutor in Williamson County knew he was sending Michael Mortensen to prison and knew he was innocent. The guy had no criminal record. His wife had been killed. Why would you just, I don't know why they do it. They just get off on putting good people in prison. I couldn't think of a more demonic thing to do other than like sacrifice children or something. And I know the government's compartmentalized. There's a lot of people in government that aren't corrupt, but they're like in different divisions. So I only raise that to show we are big time. They know we're big time. They've tried to assassinate my name, everything. They failed. So they're moving the ball game. And I mean, to the FBI's credit, they were ordered by the White House, according to multiple sources, two years ago to dig up something, and they couldn't. So then it went to the FTC and back to the FBI, and I'm two years into this, and I just, will they follow orders? I don't know. They've got a group out of D.C. reportedly will follow whatever order they're given. So whatever. I'm not afraid. And it'd be like saying, are you afraid some kidnappers are going to come? I mean, they're kidnappers. They're bad people. I mean, I'm not going to live in fear of it. I know this, if, uh, and, and this is on record, so I'm not a, I'm scared of a SWAT team raid or something like that, even though that's what they're talking about doing, just for the added media effect. Um, we're not going to resist any of it. We're going to sit there and just be the martyrs we are politically, and the whole thing will come out. And that's their only hope, I'm sure, from experts I've talked to, and I, and I concur, is to get us to do something stupid, and we're not going to do that. And the plan is I can beat the rap, whatever it's going to be. I can't beat the ride to slow us down to whatever. We're not a small organization. We're, we're, we're very strong. We reach a lot of people. We have great supporters. And out of this, we're going to get bigger and raise more capital and be stronger. And we even have studios and things set up in other countries. Everything ready for this. I mean, we think we're stupid. This is the Central Texas Command Center. And we've always expected this. So... Be sure and support us, folks. Spread the word, pray for us, and buy products at InfoWarsStore.com to help fund us in the front line fighting for your freedom and my freedom and our family's freedom and all of us together. Thank you for listening. Stay with us. We'll be back. InfoWarsLife.com. Incredible specials. Satan knows he's running out of time. Banner is falling in an attempt to save the neocon nest up there, the rhino nest. He is ejecting out of the cockpit. 
the globalists hate us for exposing the fact that the Boston bombing was a false flag. We don't know exactly.